What is up guys, Rekus here with a new video and today they finally released Talene and of course we want to have a little look at her, you can see I still have her at Epic um, and that's not for any reason, I want to give you guys an idea of what she can do at just a single copy so you know if you want to use your chest for her or maybe go for Rainy or some other uh, Celestial or Hypergen hero. Uh, one thing to note, you can quite easily get some mythic charms for her if you just go to the charm vendor, uh, good ones for her include ultimate strength energy on hit and HP vitality in general HP and vitality are her main stats if you don't know what vitality does uh, vitality is a stat we find right here and that increases the healing um, the unit receives uh, also applies to cell fields and for her that is very important because what she does and we'll look at that in a battle now um, when she dies she self revives and for that she heals herself up again so um, that is something to keep in mind with her Okay, I just used a generic Fresto team, which is mainly aimed on survival, um, and I put the uh, Talene in there, so now we can see what she can do at just a single copy. Her main thing, and that is like the general idea you have to have of her, um, she deals damage to herself and utilizes that to not only activate her abilities, but also to do damage to the enemy. You can see how rapidly she loses HP here, and that is not only due to enemy attacks, but that's also because uh, she uh, herself reduces her HP gain. You can, of course, heal her up. And in this team, uh, we have pretty massive survival. So uh, right here, she ran out of energy. For her ult, she uses energy and her own HP to deal damage. And the more uh, HP she loses and the more HP uh, the drain um, rapidly increases, um, the more damage she can deal. And that is, of course, uh, an ability that can become quite powerful. We can check this out in this situation here. We saw there was a smoky ult even, so we can compare that a little bit. And at just a single copy, honestly, I would say that is some pretty, pretty impressive damage. Um, because we see the smoky in comparison here, that is not really an easy stage. That is a, a pretty difficult stage. We have the comparison to Fresto here as well. Keep in mind with this patch uh, that we received right now, we got the fix for his illusion. So that now includes his illusion damage, which um, essentially doubled the damage that he dealt. Um, let's dive a bit further into her abilities now that we know that she can deal proper damage. Maybe we try the next fight still, because that is also quite an interesting one with the spiders there. As long as she can survive, I think she will do very, very well here. And of course, there is a nice combination with Heaven, because as I said, she starts dealing damage to herself. And uh, the longer she survives, the more damage she can really deal. Uh, in this situation, though, uh, we see a little bit of a disadvantage. Her range is three, um, meaning everything outside of this three range, which uh, the backline spiders are, uh, is essentially safe from her. We didn't see her die yet, um, which is also a fairly interesting situation when that happens, because right now we, of course, have a lot of healers, which kind of seems to be very synergetic with her. So if you have a human, if you have, like, um, a smoky, uh, that could be fairly, fairly interesting. We will once again see if she can do proper damage. The main advantage of a smoke in this situation will probably be that she indeed can move and will move forward. Smoky often disregards movement a little bit, which uh, is quite unfortunate. Let's see how much damage we deal in this situation. Uh, probably not win this fight, but still quite interesting to see a damage. There she uh, curled down, and uh, if we had some more time, she would have actually revived here. So here again, um, not with... Well, the best damage I didn't even want to say, 4.5 billion damage is quite good damage for a single copy, and we can later on buff that even more. So in terms of damage, I think... Uh, very, very well. Very, very interesting, actually. Mm, let's check out her abilities a bit more. So, as I already stated, uh, we have the ult. She flies to designate a tile on the center of the battlefield. Um, we saw that sometimes not the case. In the first uh, second fight, you could actually see her move a little bit backwards to hit the enemy. Quite interesting. She consumes a pretty major part of her HP and energy, and then she deals damage. And this damage is uh, equal to lost HP of the enemies within range, so we have extra damage in there. Um, this extra damage is shared among all hit enemies. One interesting thing to note is, with 250 energy, she will of course run out of energy pretty swiftly, um, but then she will actually consume more HP to compensate for that and uh, continue her ulti nonetheless. So that is something interesting to keep in mind here, um, and very, very important for her skills. And of course, that also means like the more HP she loses and um, the 
stronger her ult essentially gets over time, um, the more damage this already deals. So if the energy runs out, this extra damage, of course, will also increase. Um, bit weird thing that I see here and my, uh, might actually be a bug because we have like this 1% buff here, which seems a little, uh, very, very low. More than 70%, we have later on 250%. Um, so I think, I think that is a bug. We will have to see if that is fixed later. Um, beyond that, her Radiant Resurgent, uh, she also uses her skills, uh, her uh, HP to use other skills. So she will often reduce her skills, uh, reduce her HP. Here we see whenever Talene loses 10% of her max HP, she releases a warm current that restores 40% HP for the weakest allied hero. So this, essentially this HP loss that we saw during the ult, also activates this, which is very, very interesting, and of course results in quite some heals of her from her dashing out. You can see that if you go a little bit back and check out the damage windows we had, that there, of course, the heal values were also displayed, and um, that is quite interesting. We have some damage in here uh, whenever HP is restored, and also that, of course, we used in her uh, in the team. We just uh, used the Fresto team. Uh, it was also quite interesting. Don't know how much damage that really. Is, I assume uh, the most damage comes from her ult. Um, then we have this active part of the ability, and this uh, deals some area damage, consumes a pretty big amount of her HP, and also includes some life drain, which is pretty good because, well, we recover some more HP, which then again uh, helps us to do some more damage. And so it's it's a little bit um, of a circle, losing HP, gaining HP, and that is very helpful. You also get the um, regeneration, the recovery, the revival um, with this skill, the Blazing Ascension. Um, we didn't see it too often, sadly, in the fights. She transforms to a ball of flame when she's defeated and then starts recovering HP. And for that now, it is very important to understand how Vitality works because after every resurrection, um, she will reduce her Vitality permanently. And Vitality, if she reduces her Vitality permanently, of course, that means um, that she will take longer to revive because her heal takes so much longer to actually bring her back. Uh, once she reaches 65%, uh, there is an explosion, two tiles range, we have a bit of a knockback there, so maybe some synergy with Ormus, and uh, then she's actually back. Um, if you upgrade her further, then you actually gain leg a Legendary Plus, um, where we have an 8% attack increase, um, that is actually scalable to 32% uh, or at the higher stages 10 to 40% whenever she's consumed 50% of her max HP and we saw in the situation um, we just had in this team that this would have easily resulted in us having a permanent 40% increase in attack which is absolutely massive so legendary plus a very very nice upgrade for her on top of that we have um, the Pyre of Renewal. I don't really want to go over that right now. We will do full review later and I want to test that myself before we do that. But uh, really, you also get the energy recovery um, ability, which will quickly bring her to her ult. Basically, every three seconds you recover 90 energy at the beginning of the fight, so she will quickly gain her ult. So, my opinion overall for this hero, should you summon her, should you get a single copy, I think uh, it is surprisingly good, actually. I'm, I'm pretty surprised on how well she does. So not only do we have pretty insane damage, we have some heals here as well. Um, really not too bad. One thing to note though, if you just have her at a single copy, she will be quite squishy. And upgrading her, of course, takes away from your ability to actually get Rainier. Rainier is still one of the most important heroes. You will have a boss buff that is uh, used in so many boss fights. And if you use that and if you get that, um, you will actually be higher in the rankings in Dream Realm, earn more Temporal Essence and be better overall. Um, so waiting a little bit can be quite good. I think it could be very interesting. I'm very hyped for tests later. I'm very hyped to see how far we can go with it. And if we scale that up completely, it could indeed be quite interesting. This team, by the way, we usually use Merrily. I just put her in instead. Um, still, well... Not doing too insane in this situation, really. For single target, her skills are just uh, just not made. Uh, it's just an area damage, so if you hit multiple targets, they're just so much better. It's not bad, it's just also not very good. So in this boss situation, we don't really have her. Uh, I think if you don't have Rhaenyra Mythic+, plus, if you don't have Fresto, like at least Legendary+, uh, plus, I think you should not go for her and maybe 
show a bit of patience, go for those heroes first, get them first, and then maybe afterwards you are fine getting a copy of her or even more. Um, so with that being said, <laughs> we have to do the highest damage in, in frame shot. Okay, that's quite interesting. Didn't see that before. Uh, with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want, uh, tune in later for a live stream uh, of Telin. I will still announce that we will do some summons. We will test her a little bit more. We'll see uh, what secrets are hidden behind the mythic ability and if the legendary plus ability is really that good. Um, till then, I wish you a great day. We'll see us in the next one.